Welcome to the University of Guelph. We're going to go on a facility tour of the Ontario Aquaculture Research Centre. The facility is located near Alma, Ontario and is approximately a 35 minute drive north from the University of Guelph main campus. The facility was originally known as the Alma Aquaculture Research Station. In partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, Construction began in 1988 and the facility became fully operational in 1993 and we officially changed our name to Ontario Aquaculture Research Centre in 2020. The Research Centre is the backbone of the University's fish production research program, providing rearing systems for aquaculture researchers at the University of Guelph and other institutions. The Research Centre is staffed by five full-time University of Guelph employees and is a pre-production research and development facility to undertake studies relevant to aquaculture producers. The Centre provides quarantine facilities for the controlled importation of exotic fish species and different strains of fish to assist the private sector with diversification and the pursuit of new business opportunities. In addition, the Centre provides facilities for pilot testing as well as scale-up research and we also serve as a venue for education, training, equipment demonstrations and technology transfer to the private sector. Lastly, the Research Centre conducts tours to demonstrate aquaculture to government and academic communities as well as to the general public. It all starts with water. The research center is supplied with high quality groundwater from six wells around the property, which pump water at a constant year round temperature of 8.5 degrees Celsius. Each well is monitored by a flow meter and the daily pumping rates are reported to the Ministry of Environment in compliance with the center's permit to take water. All water pumped from the center's wells is first pumped to the water tower. The water is oxygenated and degassed in the water tower before it is distributed to the wet labs and the hatchery areas. The majority of the research center functions as a flow through system, meaning that the water enters the tanks, is retained for a period of time before exiting through the drain, where it eventually ends up in the wastewater treatment center. Fish require a well oxygenated environment, which means that water always has to be flowing. To maintain the flow of water, the station has a backup generator to provide power in case of an emergency. While most of the water aeration happens in the water tower, the individual fish tanks have a small diffuser or air stone similar to what you may find in a home aquarium, through which air is moved using a blower, providing supplemental oxygen. This can come in handy during an emergency when the water supply may be reduced or shut off. The first stop on our tour is the fertilization of fish eggs. To do this, sperm or milt is collected from the male fish and mixed with mature eggs collected from the female fish. A small amount of water is added to activate the sperm and the mixture is left for about a minute to allow the sperm to fertilize the eggs. When the eggs are fertilized, a little fresh water is added and then the eggs are washed clean. During this procedure, excess sperm, poor quality eggs and unfertile eggs are removed. The goal is to remove anything that would cause fungus to grow while the eggs are incubating. The eggs are placed into an incubator tray which have a constant flow of eight and a half degree water and they will remain in the trays until hatch. The incubation time is temperature dependent. For example, at seven degrees Celsius, the eggs will hatch approximately seven weeks after fertilization. Whereas at 12 degrees Celsius, rainbow trout eggs will hatch approximately three weeks after fertilization. Therefore, we can use the temperature to predict critical time periods like hatch and the timing of first feeding. Recent research at the center has focused on trying to improve the spawning success of our Arctic char population. And as well, we are attempting to breed wild lake whitefish in captivity. When incubated at eight and a half degrees Celsius, rainbow trout will hatch approximately 45 days after fertilization. After hatch, the embryos will still have a yolk sac, which they will use as an internal source of feed for approximately two weeks. As the embryos consume more of the yolk, they become more active and will soon require an external source of feed. Juvenile fish may spend up to one year in our hatchery. There are a variety of commercially available feeds for farmed fish. At the Alma Aquaculture Research Station, we use a trout starter diet that is specifically sized for first feeding. 
The feed comes in a crumble format and has a similar appearance to grains of sand. As the fish grow, the feed size will also increase. Feeding can be done by hand or by using automatic feeders, which are programmed to deliver a set volume of feed over a defined period of time. The Research Centre has the capacity to study a variety of different species and has a number of wet labs and tank sizes for research purposes and also for the maintenance of Research Centre stocks. Current research projects include rainbow trout, arctic char, lake whitefish, and lake sturgeon, but there is interest in future work with Atlantic salmon and white leg shrimp. Fish from the center's hatchery will be used for one of the following purposes. They will be entered directly into a research trial. They may be placed in the general research population for future studies. They may be kept for research center broodstock replacement in the future. Or, in the case of arctic char, some will be turned into food fish. Ultimately, all fish from the hatchery eventually need to be moved to larger tanks for grow out. The center has small tanks for early rearing experiments and larger tanks to study juvenile and mature fish. There are photoperiod labs where we can control the day length to study the effects of day length on physiology and warm water rearing tanks to study the effects of temperature and a wet lab which accommodates large scale nutrition studies. Additionally, there's an outdoor lab where fish are exposed to natural environmental conditions such as temperature and photoperiod. Recent research conducted at the center has included everything from evaluating feed-based probiotic to reduce bacterial infections in trout, to the early rearing of lake whitefish and sturgeon, in addition to the evaluation of opthermal tolerance in trout. The outdoor lab has nine large circular tanks, each holding about 70,000 litres of water. These large tanks are fitted with airlift boxes, which oxygenate the water and create a current for the fish. Most of the outdoor circular tanks hold broodstock for rainbow trout and arctic char, in addition to a population of lake whitefish that we are trying to develop into a captive breeding population. The outdoor lab also serves as a grow out area for arctic char to reach market weight, which is approximately one kilogram. Annually, the research center produces eight to 10 tons of market size arctic char, which is then served at the Brass Taps restaurant on the University of Guelph campus. It's featured on various campus event menus used for culinary training at the university. It's donated to charities and also sold to distributors as food fish. The University of Guelph has been a leader in arctic char production in this province and has supported the local aquaculture industry in adopting this fish as an alternative culture species. Up next on our tour, we're going to talk about fish reproduction. Broodstock fish are checked weekly during spawning season, which starts in September for the rainbow trout. Fish are checked for ripeness by looking for the presence of sperm or eggs. This involves using a light sedative to make the animals easy to handle. Technicians will then pick up the fish and run their hand along the abdomen of each animal. If either sperm or eggs are present, then those animals are ripe and ready to spawn. Female fish are removed from the sedation tank, quickly rinsed in water, and then patted dry with a towel. We use a scanner to check for the pit tag. This is a passive integrative transponder containing a unique identification code for each animal. Using gravity to assist, females are positioned so their heads are held higher than their tails. A technician then applies pressure to the abdomen of the fish to remove the eggs from her body. This technique is also called stripping. This spawning practice is non-lethal and allows for the reconditioning of the fish so it may be spawned again next season. After the eggs are removed from the female, we collect a body weight and a body length measurement before returning the fish to the recovery tank. Sperm is collected from the males in the same way that the eggs are collected from the females. Pressure to the abdomen will result in sperm being ejected through the vent where it is collected in a dry container. After the measurements are collected on the males, they too are returned to the recovery tank. Once all the eggs and sperm are collected, we then move to the lab where we plan our crosses and fertilize the eggs, thus starting the production cycle over again. A unique feature of the Ontario Aquaculture Research Centre is its quarantine, isolation and recirculation facility. This facility has three independent rooms, 
each with biosecure entrances, which allows for the controlled importation of exotic species or strains of fish. And this helps us assist the private sector with diversification. Imported animals can be held in quarantine, separate and isolated from the rest of the facility until health testing can be completed. Additionally, this facility is designed to allow for recirculation aquaculture. Instead of the flow-through system that's available in all of the other buildings throughout the station, recirculation aquaculture is essentially a technology that reuses the water in production. This method significantly reduces the amount of water used to operate a fish farm. The technology is based on the use of mechanical and biological filters in addition to an efficient oxygenation system and the method can, in principle, be used for any species grown in aquaculture. Seen from an environmental point of view, the limited amount of water used in recirculation is of course beneficial as water has become a limited resource in many regions. Also, the limited use of water makes it much easier and cheaper to remove the nutrients excreted from the fish as the volume of discharged water is much lower than that discharged from a traditional fish farm. Another benefit of recirculation aquaculture is that we can control the temperature of the water, allowing us to efficiently grow fish at a variety of water temperatures. The final stop on our tour is going to talk about wastewater management. After the water has gone through a tank and has left a wet lab, it flows to the wastewater treatment center. Here, the flow of water is slowed down to allow for physical settling. This is where the large suspended solids, such as uneaten fish food and fish feces, are settled out. This waste material is stored in large manure storage tanks, which are cleaned out once or twice a year, depending on the amount of accumulation. The water then passes through clarifiers to allow for smaller solids to settle out. Up to 100% of this treated water can then be returned to the water tower for reoxygenation before being used in the outdoor fish tanks. After the water has been used a second time, it passes through the wastewater treatment center again for settling before being discharged to the outdoor ponds. After the ponds, the water eventually leaves the property through a stream. This water reuse capability greatly reduces the amount of water that is extracted from the aquifer to run the aquaculture research station. The collecting channel and polishing ponds act as natural biofilters where nitrogen and phosphorus wastes are used by plant life. Water is collected where the pond flows out to the stream and is tested for total suspended solids and total phosphorus. This information is required for Ontario's environmental compliance approval, which is necessary for land-based fish farms to discharge water. The Ontario Aquaculture Research Centre has been supporting the aquaculture industry and aquaculture researchers in Ontario for over 25 years. We hope that you enjoyed the tour of our facility, and if you want to learn more about what we do here, you can find us online at www.uoguelph.ca, or you can find us on Instagram and YouTube. Thank you very much for watching.